Hello, and this is Sunny. Welcome back. Today I will talk about the main differences between the standard spanning tree protocol and the rapid spanning tree protocol. Rapid spanning tree protocol is an improved version of the classic spanning tree protocol. Both standards share many features and functions, but in this video, I will mainly focus on their differences in five areas. First, let's see some differences in terms of port roles. Both versions have a road port and a designated port, and their functions are still the same. Rapid spanning tree protocol gets rid of a blocked port but adds two new ports alternate port and a backup port. Both alternate port and a backup port are in the blocking state, but they function differently. The alternate port is similar to the blocked port in the standard spanning tree protocol. It is the second best road port to the road bridge. If the current road port fails, the alternate port will take over. Alternate port is a substitute to a different segment towards the road bridge. On the other hand, the backup port is used as a redundant non-designated port. If there is already a designated port forwarding to a segment, then the other port is the backup port. In other words, a backup port is a substitute to the same LAN segment away from the road bridge. To summarize, alternate port is the second best road port to the road bridge, and a backup port is the second best designated port to another switch or hub, but not to the road bridge. In rapid spanning tree protocol, there is another new type of port, edge port. An edge port is directly connected to an endpoint workstation or device. Edge ports do not create switching loops and do not cause any topology change. Edge ports are in the forwarding state, but in a normal situation, they do not participate in rapid spanning tree protocol. Let's see the differences in terms of port states. Standard spanning tree protocol has five states, forwarding, learning, listening, blocking, and disabled. Rapid spanning tree protocol has three states only, forwarding, learning, and discarding. Ports in the discarding state do not forward frames nor process frames, but they do listen for BPDUs. Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol introduces a new concept, link type. There are two link types, point-to-point -point link and a shared link. If the link between switches is full duplex, is called point-to-point -point link. If the link is half duplex, is considered as a shared link. Normally, the link connected to a hub would be a shared link. In switched networks today, most links operate in full duplex mode and are treated as point-to-point -point links. Only point-to-point -point link benefits from rapid transition to the forwarding state in rapid spanning tree protocol. Four. Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol provides a faster topology change detection. In the standard STP, when a switch detects a topology change, it first tells the road bridge by sending out its DCMBPDU. When the road bridge gets the message, 
it sends out the TCP PDU to every other switch in the network. But in the rapid spanning tree protocol, the TCA message propagation is only one step process. It directly sends out its message to everyone. The initiator of the topology change, which is switch D in this case, floods this information throughout the network. There's no need to wait for the road bridge to be notified, and this makes a faster topology change detection. 5. Last but not least, Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol provides significantly faster convergence in response to network changes. STP can take 20 seconds maximum age to respond to a network change. Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol is able to respond to changes within 6 seconds, and even much less. For STP, forward delay timer 15 seconds by default is needed for the state transition. For example, the transition from the blocking state to forwarding state, it takes a port to forward delay time 30 seconds. For rapid spanning tree protocol, there is no more forward delay timer in the transition. As a matter of fact, Rapid Spanning Tree Protocol does not use timer anymore. Instead, it introduces a new way of handling convergence, proposal agreement and synchronization, which I will talk about in my next video. I hope this video is helpful. If you want to learn network systematically, please check out my playlists. They are organized by topics. Thank you very much and see you next time.